Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey is directed by David E. Talbert. Talbert. This film is about a toy maker that loses his passion and purpose after a partner of his steals his book of creations, a book of ideas for all of his inventions. And so pretty much has to find that that purpose again. After the toy maker has aged horribly, gets the opportunity to make another toy to change the whole course of the world or something. And they're going to give him lots and lots of money for it. But then meets his granddaughter that he's never met before and on for the ride of the Christmas journey. Pretty much is the gist of it. You know, guy, guy that's a toy maker, loses his passion in life, has to babysit his granddaughter and finds life through her, I guess. Something like that. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't do any research at, uh, pre-watching this movie. Um, one, because it's a Netflix movie and it's a Christmas Netflix movie. And we all know the rap sheet of Christmas Netflix movies. They suck. So I wasn't really too excited to see this thing. I was actually more so just kind of wanting to get it out the way just because it's Christmas and Christmas is coming up and, uh, you know, wanted to just do a review for you guys in the time for the holidays. Um, and not to mention all these show was just that girl on the poster and I don't know who she was. So I wasn't really interested in really seeing this thing, but I started getting a lot of, started to see a lot of posts on my social media about how this movie was pretty good. The movie was great and things like that. So I checked it out. Um, this movie wasn't supposed to be this good. It wasn't supposed to be this good, guys. Like at all. Like I'm, I'm actually quite impressed how good it is. It's not supposed to be that good, but it is. The first thing is that they kept the cast names to themselves. I didn't watch the trailers, so I don't really. I went in here so super blind. Um, but they shouldn't have put that girl on the poster because I don't know who that girl is. Okay, they have Forrest Whitaker in here. Okay, they got Keegan Michael Key in here. Okay, they got Anika Rose in here okay they got people who i never would have thought to even consider doing a netflix christmas special let alone for netflix okay these are like high paying very stellar actors you know who are who don't who don't, they don't deserve netflix you know they're too good for netflix in my opinion and yet they're in this movie you know it's this cheesy you know, uh, 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 well wished, well wishes family, family Christmas movie, and it's good. It's good. I'm kind of blown. I'm kind of blown away right now because I just, I, I'm, I'm, I was, I just, I didn't expect this. I'm just, I didn't expect this, this, uh, this good news to be coming about. But I, I guess it is. I was, I was expecting. I wanted to trash this movie. I was gonna trash this movie because it just looked cheap and looked stupid. But it didn't look cheap at all. So let's just talk about it for a second. The budget of this film looked expensive. I don't know how much they put into this movie. But the effects, the sets, the costumes, the wigs. Man, they 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 gave Tyler Perry a run for his money because that shit looked expensive. That shit looked good. That looked good. All of the magic and all of the all of the 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 um, the anime, the cute computer generated uh, toy and things like that. All oh, this looked really good. It looked really, really real. And I wasn't expecting that. I really wasn't. Forrest Whitaker. I'm going to tell you something else I wasn't expecting. I didn't expect this dude to have a voice like that. Okay? This dude was singing his ass off. Okay? Well, maybe I shouldn't say his ass off. This dude has some vocals. They weren't great. Like he ain't no usher or nothing. Like he ain't, he ain't a classical singer, but he has some vocals, and it wasn't that bad. Come on with it, Forrest. <laughs> Come on with it, Forrest. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker plays this Geronicus Django guy. That's his name, Geronicus Django. But you know, in the movie they call him Jerry because ain't nobody about to call this dude Geronicus. 
kidding me? Dronicus, bruh, that name, okay, sit your ass down somewhere. Okay, your name is Jerry. <laughs> but he's, so Forrest Whitaker play, plays this toy maker and pretty much his dreams are pretty much all shattered and, and he's kind of depressed because after, you know, his partner kind of steals all of his ideas, you know, his wife dies and, uh, and his, uh, uh, he loses everything, essentially. His family, his business, everything is pretty much gone from this guy. And he's just really, really he's like the Scrooge. He's like the black Scrooge of this movie. <laughs> he hates Christmas. He hates toys. He, he hates kids, I think. And he's just not really the best guy to be around, especially around the holidays. It's not like I didn't like Forrest Whitaker playing this role. I think what it is is that sometimes his delivery in the lines felt a little too uh, monotone for me. You know, um, I mean, because as an actor, Forrest has his moments where he's really killing it. He's really blowing me away. He also has moments, too, where, you know, I'm just not buying it. But ultimately, he wasn't the biggest. Um, it's not like he took away anything from the movie. I think he did fine. I think ultimately he did fine. That singing, though impressed me quite a bit he doesn't sing much he doesn't sing much at all the dude had vocals i see you okay and it wasn't bad the girl who plays his granddaughter that girl can sing her behind off okay <laughs> and she was actually really cute she was really really uh quite charming as well i didn't expect for her to really kind of um pull on my heartstrings the way the the way the message of the movie was trying to do you know, and she has a, num a musical number in here that was uh, quite inspiring, quite inspiring as well. You know, she got some moves. You know, I, I, was, I, was, I was so I was watching this with my wife. And one of the things that I said was that her, her name was Madeline Mills. She plays Journey. That's the name of the granddaughter that he has to babysit. I said to my wife that, you know, she looks like she looks like Miguel's daughter. You know, if he was to ever have a kid, you know, that looks like something that. You know, they look a little related. You know, maybe it was just a hairdo or something. Because, you know, his forehead and shit. Like, I don't, I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, but she was doing the thing on that. She was dancing and doing her singing and things like that. And, and she was pretty good for the character. You know, she wasn't really so annoying. She wasn't. I mean, she's a kid. So I, I give kids. Ten, I tend to give kids a break. Especially when they're not pulling it off as flawlessly as they should do. But she did a really good job. Um, now, the boy, the little boy that she starts to kind of like sidekick with. You know, no, no, you know, nah, nah, just, just now, just now. Now, Kiko Michael Key, as the villain, boy, you was having some fun on that shit, okay? I know you, I, I know you was getting, you was happy as hell waking up in the morning to play this role. He killed it in this one. Okay, I can, and you can just tell he was just having fun with it. It's not a serious role or nothing like that, but the guy was having so much fun with this movie just for because of what it is. Like this movie is not supposed to be taken so seriously. It's a Christmas movie, for Christ's sake. So there's a lot of suspense of belief that's you know kind of expected, and that's kind of what the movie's asking for. And so that kind of have you know Keegan kind of play this villain a little cartoony. You know, I think fit well because. Keegan Michael Key is already a cartoony type of guy, you know, and you know by him kind of like applying his comedic time into certain things, it was just really charming. Like I actually was cracking up seeing him kind of act a fool in this film, <laughs> so I was actually enjoying it, man. Like, this, like this movie ain't supposed to be this good. Like they got some, they got some stellar actors in here pulling it off and taking it seriously. Like, I wonder how much they got paid for this because this movie ain't supposed to be this good. And I've seen a lot of Netflix movies. Not not a lot of Netflix Christmas movies, and they're pretty trash. And I think this is, I yeah, this is probably the the first time I genuinely was entertained by this. I actually genuinely like this film. Now the story itself, you know, obviously it's not something to be enthralled by. It's not like a an I mean, it's original, but it's not something where it's gonna you know, um, I, I wouldn't. It's not going to make you come back to it, really, to be honest with you. The story, I think, is the weakest part of it um, because there are some things about the, you know, just the, him in the toys and and kind of, I mean, to get a sense of that is fine, but 
kind of seeing him mope around and saying what my business things like that i just wasn't really too interested in the story but i'm gonna tell you why i'm gonna come back to this film i'm gonna tell you why i would watch this film again that music the music the music boy that shit slaps i said that that shit slaps okay and i think the music kept me in it as much as it did because it was so good okay because like i told you i was ready to shit on this movie but the mu- the music was so damn good. That shit was woo. That shit was fire. Oh, that shit was fire. They had like the, the first number in there. You know, kind of had like a had like some kind of R and B hip hop vibe to it. And then you get the the you get um the girl kind of singing her number, and she's killing it with that voice. You know, and she's doing some little dance moves and things like that. And then there's like some moments in there where the like the production of the music was just, I think so fantastic okay like damn the story and damn everything else this music was fire i will watch this movie just for the soundtrack okay it's a shame it's on netflix because i feel like that music needs to be heard across the board especially around this time and the fact that you can only get it on netflix god damn that shit slapped that shit slapped man i want to know who's, who's part of that music oh i okay john john legend produced that thing i see you boy I see you. Yeah. Produce more shit because that shit slapped hard. That shit was fire. I also liked um the little toy, the, the little toy that comes alive. <laughs> he he like he kinda has like this this over over dramatic uh Spanish accent and kind of doing these little Zorro dances and things like that. And, and talks like Antonio Banderas from the Mask of Zorro. <laughs> um I, I thought he was pretty cool. You know, I, and I'm glad that he wasn't in the movie too much because, you know, Characters like that tend to annoy me a lot, um, but he was only there enough just to sing a song and kind of be gone for a good chunk of the movie, which is I appreciate it. Um, but I think he starts to really show the comedy when he's like along with Keegan Michael Key because this toy is supposed to be like, you know, part of the arch em- the arch nemesis to Keegan Michael Key's character. Um, he's like the uh, the Iago to uh keegan's jafar if you will you know they're like kind of plotting and planning and convincing them you need to steal this list steal the toys make this toy and and follow this strategy to take over the whole world and you'll be rich and famous and it was working but you know at, at some there's some points where you know he's like annoying the fuck out of keegan and stuff and it, you know he was just funny but it was hilarious he was like slapping him across the head <laughs> he would just slap him across the head when he did some fucked up shit and it's crazy because I think what made it funnier is because Keegan is bald. He has this big old body. <laughs> you know, he got that five head just sitting right here. Fools, fools, yes, fools. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure the director's saying, let's have a toy slap the fuck out of Keegan's head. You know, we got that ball spot needs to, you know, it's just so slappable. <laughs> now, I thought the, I thought also, too, there's like a part in there where they, they explain how Journey is like this genius or whatever, and she kind of has like, this intellectual gene that's like passed down from generation to generation or something. Jang- Jangle is like this genius toy maker where he kind of sees numbers. He kind of like sees science. It's kind of like if Einstein and if Stephen Hawking were to like work on something, they would see these formulas in their head and kind of like draw in the air about, you know, some formula or some equation or whatever. And that's kind of like what he does. That's kind of like his superpower. I can see numbers and form in my head in two seconds. And it was a very it was a it was a skill that only he could do, which was why he was so successful before he lost everything. And his granddaughter exhibited that same trait or inherited that same trait because it's in her blood. Um and she can do the same thing. She can see things and all that kind of stuff. And and she's just as quick witted and just as capable of creating toys and figuring things out and tinkering with with the uh, toys just as much just as well as Django can. Django. I keep saying Django. Django can. And I, it's cute, you know, it's it's a, it's a Christmas movie, so it's really not too much to really grab off of, but I thought it was kind of silly. I was just like, really? This guy inherited some genius trait from her grandfather, really? It's in our blood to be smart. You know, but you know, I didn't really take it too seriously. It's a Christmas movie. It's for the kids. You know, it's, it is what it is. So I'm just leaving it at that. 
But this movie wasn't supposed to be this good, man. I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was actually something really, really uh, special. You know, and it came out around the time where everybody's kind of cooped in their houses right now. And around Christmas time, that's like a, a strong pill to swallow. But to watch this film and just kind of just enjoy it for what it is, you know, I got to be honest, man. I like this. I like this movie a lot. I like this movie a lot, man. Like, like that music was was bomb. That, that shit was fire. You know, and the acting wasn't too bad. You know, the, the the set designs and the costumes and and the special effects, all that shit was was legit. That shit was legit, man. They oh yeah, they also have I don't know why I didn't mention this. They have Felicia Rashad in this movie too. They got Felicia Rashad in here. G. Like the cat, they have a they have a good cast in this film too that was willing to back this film and support it. And you know what? I think my only complaint about this film is that it's on Netflix. I don't really like that it's on Netflix, man. I think that had this movie been in theaters, it would have got a lot more praise than it's getting right now. I mean, because people love it and things like that, but it's because it's a Netflix special Christmas type movie, it's not going to get a lot of clout. And I think movies like these, especially particularly one like this, needs to get more praise and more attention because that music was fire. And a lot of times when you have a Christmas movie with a fire soundtrack, the radio loves to play the shit on that, especially around Christmas time. And I feel like those songs need to be on the radio. And they're not, man. They're not because it's on Netflix. But hey, what, what can I say? But I thought the movie was great, man. I thought the movie was good. I think it's good for kids. I think it's a good family film um, to watch, um, especially around the holidays. It's not bad at all. It's really not bad at all. I was really underestimating this movie. And it's quite good. I'm actually still shocked at how good it was, <laughs> you know. Um, and yeah, there's some and look. There's some still. There's some silly stuff in there. There's some cheesy things in there, and there, there are some moments where it gets kind of corny. But ultimately, it's like I feel like there's a lot of things in this film that saves it from all that kind of stuff. And then you just kind of appreciate it for what it is. It's a family film, and as a family guy myself, you know, I digged it. So I'm gonna give it a seven and a half out of ten. I mean, it was dope, you know? I mean, yeah. Yeah, good job, guys. Like, good good, good job, you know? I just hope that Netflix comes out with more good movies like this, you know, where they're not so seasonal, you know? Like, actually put some money towards some good ideas because sometimes Netflix be dropping a Actually, no, all the time, Netflix be dropping a ball with their movies. I think the last good movie they had was Extraction. And the one before that was The Irishman. You know, those are two movies in a whole year that I watched. Like, I'm going to need y'all to get it together. Okay? But they did good on this one. I actually enjoyed this one. So, good job. So, that's my review on Jingle Jangle. I hope you guys enjoyed that re review. Um, really, not much, to, uh, wasn't too much to say about, uh, you know, a lot of things in there because this is a Christmas movie. So, I kind of tried to give it a little bit of a, a break on this one. But other than that, um, I think it's a good film for kids. Um, I recommend it for the Christmas time. Um, and uh, uh, hope you guys enjoy the holidays. Okay? So you guys take care.